And we're back. Welcome back to the Scandi Sports Podcast. I feel like talking about some hoops today, like I usually do. And we're joined here today with my good friend Ricky Yeg for three. Ricky, how you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? You know, every day starts pretty good, and then I just remind myself that the Boston Celtics are in the finals, and then it's just downhill from there. <laughs> like, we are not, we are not Celtics friendly on this podcast. I've got a couple buddies that are just like diehard Celtics fans. And I mean, before we go far forward, are you, are you a Celtics fan? I'm not a Celtics fan, but I'm probably rooting for them. I'm not not the biggest Warriors ah. fan, personally. Ah. <laughs> okay, well, at least you're not a full on Celtics fan because they're by far the most annoying friends you could have. Like yeah. every time you're talking to someone, Tatum gets two years younger and he's broken some obscure stat line that's never existed before and i mean he's still 19 he's only 19 it's it's irritating you know what i actually started doing is i just started agreeing i just let it go they're like yeah you know like in the first round after like a one point victory over the nets they're like 18's coming home i'm like you know what yeah <laughs> sure and life's gotten a little bit better but then even fake rooting for the celtics is hard dude it's hard i don't doubt it <laughs> Ricky, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of what your role is here in the, the landscape of the CEBL? Sure. So um, um, my name is Ricky Milnes. I am a 20-year-old student at the University of Victoria. Um, I founded a CEBL-oriented page. Um, I originally called it Stinger Zone, and I was covering exclusively the Edmonton Stingers of the CEBL. Um, over time, I evolved into a little bit more and rebranded my my platform into YG for three. And now I essentially just try to provide the most in-depth coverage of the CBL and all 10 teams and, um, you know, anything from media to stat lines of the day to key takeaways to, you know, um, game day notes, getting ready for game days and just reviewing all 10 teams. We do power rankings, um, all kinds of stuff, like uh, just anything related to the CBL. Um, you, you can find me on all the social media platforms covering it pretty in depth. And where do you think your first interest in the CBL started? Like, was this kind of like there was never a pro team in my market and they finally brought one there and let's go or? Yeah, so um, I was living in Edmonton at the time, and um, this would have been in 2019 in the inaugural CBL season. And uh, my dad surprised me with tickets to the season opener for the Edmonton Stingers, and I'd never heard of the Stingers um, or the CBL for that matter. And I like basketball, but I was exclusively watching the NBA. I didn't know there was Canadian basketball. Mm -hmm. And I showed up one day for the Edmonton Stingers versus Niagara River Lions and, you know, sat through the game. It was an incredible environment. And I, I believe like three days later, I started my page. I was hooked ever since. Mm -hmm. So let's start there. Um, my sort of goal for this podcast is to get other people that didn't know about the CEBL or just starting to hear about it because of Jake Cole and whatnot uh, to sort of get into the rhythm of the CEBL. And I feel like there's no better person right now to catch people up on the league uh, than yourself. So let's start with um, this season. What teams are standing out and what teams may be lagging behind and what's the general landscape of the CEBL? Yeah, so obviously everybody not everybody, but there's a big chunk of people that have come over to CBL fandom from the Scarborough shooting stars. Um, obviously with the signing of J Cole, it was huge news. And, um, you know, they're kind of the, the biggest team that everyone's talking about right now. Mm. Um, but unfortunately they're lagging behind a little bit at this point. Um, they don't have the best record in the league. They're not one of the top teams in the league. Um, but they have, you know, some, some promising players like um, Jalen Harris and Xavier Raton Mays are, are really strong players. So um, they're a big team that a lot of people are watching and hoping can kind of shoot up in the rankings a little bit. Um, some teams that are doing really well right now, the Hamilton Honey Badgers in my eyes are one of the top teams in the CBL. They're um, four and one. And as of this recording and their one loss came to just a one point game. So in my eyes, yeah, one of the strongest teams. And then the other one that stands out is 
the Edmonton Stingers who are coming off back-to-back CBL championships and again just absolutely annihilating the league this year with just one loss so those two are probably the top teams in my eyes the the Scarborough Shooting Stars and um, I think another one that's lagging behind a little bit is the Newfoundland Growlers which is another new expansion team this year they are yet to win a game as of this recording so um yeah the expansion teams are struggling a little bit but um some of our more consistent original six teams like the stingers and honey badgers seem to have found their root um their groove a little bit and yeah you talk about newfoundland uh kind of lagging behind right now but i believe and correct me if i'm wrong uh the top scorer in the league is on that team yeah so they have brandon sampson he's averaging about 26 points a game right now and he's leading the league um, a big reason for that is because of his record-breaking 42-point performance last week. Um, and they've only played three games, so it's it's really hard to say what that team looks like at this point. But yeah, they do have the leading score through their first three games. And they also have another top 10 score in Shaquille Keith on their roster right now. So the pieces are there, uh, just the wins aren't quite adding up yet for them. Great. Okay. And Ricky, you're the first podcast guest I've had that I actually gave homework to. So <laughs> did you do your homework? I definitely did my homework. I got We're... the whole whole list up here on my Let's screen. Let's get it. So. Let's get it. So Ricky's generously taking the time to help us uh, who are coming from the NBA. I mean, the finals is going to be over before we know it. So I wanted to see if you can come up with a few uh, CEBL to NBL comparisons. Let's start on the team side of things what nba teams are mirrored in cebl teams yeah so the most obvious one that comes to mind is the golden state warriors um their comparison is the edmonton stingers they're coming off back-to-back championships and even though in their first season they didn't win a championship they were one of the top teams uh so much like the warriors they're always competing they've got multiple championships in recent years um in their history they've got their electric star point guard in xavier moon which uh, his play style doesn't exactly mirror Steph Curry's, but his impact does. Um, and just the whole roster around, they've got Jordan Baker, who's a, a you know safe comparison to Draymond Green. And just their coaching staff is really strong, just like the Warriors. So that's probably the biggest, most obvious comparison. Um, another one that really comes to mind recently is the Scarborough Shooting Stars, who at this point are looking a lot like the Los Angeles Lakers. Mm. Um in the sense that, you know, a very talented roster. They have, uh, at the beginning of the season, I anticipated that they would be one of the top teams, just like most did for the Lakers, but it hasn't panned out that way so far. Um, but, you know, it's it's a good core of players that have the potential to compete. And um, let's, let's pause you right there with the, with the Lakers comparison and Scarborough, because you're talking about how talented the roster is. There's Kyle Alexander, who is just always on the NBA bubble. Jalen Harris, who was drafted a year or two ago by the Raptors. And then there's just talent up and down. Um, Are you surprised with the slow start? Or is it almost sort of like there's a lot of alpha here and only one basketball? Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of scorers on that team. And that's what it comes down to is there's a lot of guys who need to score the ball. And like, you know, Xavier Raton Mays is one of their top scorers. And he's someone we've had in the CBL before. And and we saw how you know he was he was previously a single game record point um, record holder for most points. He had thirty seven when he played with the Hamilton Honey Badgers, and he's somebody who needs to score a lot. Jalen Harris is someone who has proven that he can score a lot. You got Kyle Alexander, you got AJ Lawson. Oh, no, sorry, not AJ Lawson. He's on the Nighthawks. Um, but yeah, like you've got you know Isaiah Mike has come in there and shown that he can score. So I think that I'm not surprised that they're not succeeding but i didn't expect them to be towards the bottom of the league i think i saw them being a very talented team that sat in the middle of the league somewhere Mm -hmm. and i still think they can get there i just they haven't quite reached that mark yet yeah it would assume i mean and i know the owner of the team sam um but i guess and obviously their general manager is brady heslip who has intersection intersections where where i came from uh same high school and all that but it looks like talent acquisition wise they got the most talent but the cbl is equally talented as a uh, as a whole 
So there is a lot of roster construction that actually has to go into these teams. It's you need a facilitator, you need guys that are going to lock up, you need guys that are going to score, and it's an equal blend as opposed to just best available, best available, best available. Yeah, I think that it's uh like it was a great job putting the roster together by the Scarborough staff, and and they did a really excellent job of bringing in talent. Um, but I don't think it speaks so much as to their talent is not good is mm -hmm. why they're succeeding. I think it just shows that the CBL is a very talented league. And in order to succeed, you need to be able to do everything. Before and we go into, yeah, absolutely. Before we go into team number three, while we're on Scarborough, what was your assessment of uh, Jay Cole uh, as a basketball player so far? Yeah. I mean, like uh, I've asked a lot of people about this myself too. I've mm -hmm. talked to players about it and um, I've gotten lots of mixed, mixed perceptions. Um, personally, he's playing about six to 12 minutes a game, mm. um, which I think is, you know, reasonable. He's getting on the court and getting some shots up and, you know, he scored six points the other day and three points in a previous game. So, um, you know, I think that there was a lot of hype around him and I mm -hmm. think that there's no doubt that he can play. I just don't think that he's a CEBL level talent per se. And, mm -hmm. Um, you know, he, he came in here and he did his thing. He got a lot of attention on the league and he scored a couple baskets, but like you look at it, like, you know, I, I searched it up and J Cole's 37. Like there's not yeah. a lot of veteran players like that in the league even. So, um, so yeah, I have, I have no complaints about the, the choice to bring him in. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, but I think he's, he's, he's right there. He's, he's got a little bit more work to do though. It's interesting because from a body point of view like I got to go to the Scarborough Guelph game uh when I was able to work and there was like he doesn't stick out in a negative way in terms of like physique and um you know just general eye test because he did play in college he's a legit that's I want to say six three six four like he's yeah. he's tall enough he's strong enough it's I'm sure the age uh brings it down I don't know what life on the road is like and how how that would have affected his game if he's, you know, constantly fatigued or whatnot. But um, from that perspective, fine. Uh, Talent-wise, yeah. No, there's no... These guys are... People went to, from the CBL to the league last year. Like, this is not... <laughs> this is not just, you know, yeah. come in and get your bucket sort of league. Uh, but marketing point of view and what he did for the league to this point, they got Guelph on a weekday to be sold out. They got... Yeah. Uh, Scarborough was packed. Uh, uh, Scotty Barnes, Drake, they, like he did his job from a marketing point of view. And I don't think he played so poorly as to be a stain on his career. Um, I think, yeah, I think everybody won so far in this deal. And I, and it's, yeah. it's generally out but at this point, he's going on tour. Um, so he will not be at the next stretch of games. I'd say at least a month or so. Right. I think we looked it up together yesterday. So yeah. he's going to be gone for, for a little bit of time. But I think job finished. He did good. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, the most important thing with J. Cole was that he didn't, he wasn't a liability on the court. Mm -hmm. And um, as long as he went in there, he, you know, checked somebody. He played solid defense and he even hit a couple baskets. It's an absolute success for the league and for him personally. Absolutely. What do you got for team number three? Um, so the next team I'll look at, I got a couple options here. Let's, uh, let's go with the Niagara river lions. So, um, the river lions are typically, they've been one of the top teams in the league for all four seasons now in the CBL and, and they've been right up there with Edmonton. So I'm going to be comparing them to the Miami heat, um, in the same way that, so the river lions have, you know, are they hard this, workers. Yeah, they have absolutely. The culture. <laughs> they, they've got the culture and that that's what the coaching staff, they've had one coach for their four years, uh, which in the CBL is very rare. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they've got guys who've, you know, they've had some roster turnover, but the guys who have come in there have grinded it out. They There's not typically one guy who's doing everything. This year, we're seeing that mm -hmm. a little bit from Khalil Ahmad, like we would with Jimmy Butler, but there's... You know, there's a full team there of people who are all doing their part and it's, you know, it's paying off and wins. So that's uh, probably my best comparison for the Niagara River Lions. So we're going to retract really quickly back to Scarborough because uh, I'm just being sent a flurry of messages saying that, uh, yeah, J. Cole is permanently stepping away from the Scarborough Shooting Stars 
as of right now. So that's just being posted as we're recording. So oh. by the time this comes out, uh, he's not coming back. So it's going to be more than just a month. But um, I kind of cheated you on your Miami comparison. Just uh, what, what are the spark notes for that again? You're saying the culture is there, the hard working, the coach has been there the entire tenure. Yeah, like it, it's it's a consistent group. It's a full roster of players who can all do different things. Mm. Um, and all who, you know, like it's it's like the Miami Heat. They check off every box. They've got shooters. They've got guys who can play defense. They've got a big man in the middle and EJ Onu. They've got like people who can do everything. And it makes for, you know, wins. And it's a tough matchup for a lot of teams who can't really expose a weakness. Like, like with the Heat. Right. Is there any other teams on your list that you'd be excited to, to talk about right now? Yeah, I think uh, one more I kind of would want to dive into a little bit would be the um, the Guelph Nighthawks. Interesting. Um, they, they've not had a lot of success, and this is not for the same reasons. I've kind of picked three really successful teams, right? Um, aside from Scarborough, who's you know more of a legacy team at this point. But yeah. um, the Nighthawks have been one of the struggling teams in the CBL for the first four seasons hit them and <laughs> what is it and it's uh let's see sorry I lost my notes there it is New York Knicks Ooh. um it's it's not good it's yeah. it's rough and they're always a team who's expected to do good mm -hmm. um every year they're in there for the top spot and like you know power rankings have them at the top or in the top three almost every year and they never ever make it out of the first round of the playoffs Mm. and they have the talent like they've got one of the best backcourts in the league right now um but they just they're not putting it together and they're consistently struggling every single season and nothing is changing so talk about that backcourt for a second is, is that cat is it barber yeah it's a uh, cat barber and ahmed hill is and that i vaguely remember i think cat had an nba uh 10 day maybe yeah so he was with the atlanta hawks for a short period of time he was with the uh, g league affiliate for the hawks for the mm. whole season but yeah he does have nba experience and yeah it's it's showing in his cbl season here he's one of the definitely one of the top mvp candidates so far right so guelph is obviously not new york in terms of presence but are you uh kind of simulating the fact that there's always a lot of promise and people are saying this is our year it's our year it's our year and it's not panning out that's exactly it is that there's like there's fans even who are expecting their team to do good year after year and they're being disappointed year after year so it's definitely yeah guelph is one of our smallest markets in the cbl and mm -hmm. is one of the smaller fan bases in the cbl but as far as mm -hmm. what's expected out of them on an annual basis that they're not meeting their expectations regularly so the venue is killer though i enjoyed going uh to their to their game probably a month ago now but yeah, it's an, it's a nice. I mean, the the hockey arena is retrofitted to basketball courts. They look really nice. Mm. Never been there, but uh, yeah, I've uh, wanted to go to every CBL stadium, and apparently that one's pretty nice. So, it's it's decent. It's definitely decent. So those are team comparisons. What about players that maybe mirror sort of NBA player styles? Yeah, um, I got a bunch here. So one of the top ones um that i've actually been comparing for a long time even before this player joined the cbl was walt lemon jr of the ottawa blackjacks um i i have his comparison as derrick rose so um walt lemon jr for those who aren't familiar with him was somebody who spent time real time in the nba and played um significant minutes for the chicago bulls one season Mm. And um, towards the end of the year, when the Bulls were already knocked out of the playoffs, I believe it was 2018, um, somewhere around that time. And he was he was impressive. He was scoring at will. He was really good. There was a lot of hype around him. And and, um, you know, there was comparisons being made about Derrick Rose just due to his like insane athleticism and his ability to finish around the rim. It was really impressive. And uh, unfortunately, he was traded in a deal. I can't remember who it was for, but he was traded off to the Pacers, I believe, and uh, waived. So the, the NBA is so finicky like that, and the CBL is full of stories just like that, where the players they find themselves in a situation where next year I'm going to come back to training camp. I think I have a good shot to make the roster, and then it's like those minimum contracts and deals. One, they make the money work sometimes, and two, it's like here's something that you can just do whatever you want with, but we really want the picks or this other player in the deal or whatever and they become expendable and it's just yeah there, there's a there's a handful of guys i would say 
I mean, you're splitting hairs when you're, when you're talking about CBL players versus depth and end of the bench NBA players. I feel like those, a lot of those are just very interchangeable. Yeah, like it's, it really just goes to show that if you have an opportunity to perform in the NBA, then, you know, that's all you need. And there's guys from the CBL who have gone to the NBA and succeeded. And there's guys from the NBA who've come down to the CBL and struggled. So mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, it just goes to show that the talent difference between these two leagues is not as large as people think it is. Yeah. And, and internationally as well. It's like, it's splitting hairs. Um, who, who else we got? So the next one I've got, uh, I've talked a little bit about, I mentioned him briefly, was um, Shaquille Keith of the Newfoundland Growlers. Mm. Um, so this is a guy who has played on, I believe, five CBL teams now. He's played on like the Badgers, the Rattlers, the Bandits, the Blackjacks, and now the, the, um, the Growlers. So my comparison for him is Jimmy Butler um, for the... <laughs> for the transferring around a lot mm -hmm. but also for his play style he's he's somebody who doesn't take a lot of threes he's very powerful around the rim and an excellent finisher he's a mm -hmm. strong rebounder he's a good mid-range shooter he's a good defender um but yeah he, he plays a hundred percent all out he's just darting up and down the court you watch his highlights it's mm -hmm. it's very impressive for you know he's he's six seven but he's a big six seven and he runs up and mm -hmm. down that court all days like he's very very hustle oriented player but there was no Minnesota moment there for him. He wasn't in Saskatchewan beating up everybody in practice, demanding a trade. No, uh, not uh, as far as I know. But um, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure, like, yeah, he, he seems like a pretty decent guy. And um, yeah, I don't, I haven't heard of anything like that. But it wouldn't surprise me. He's a very, very energetic player. Absolutely. Let's keep going. Let's keep, let's keep the list moving. I'm sure there's more players and teams. Yeah, um, okay. there, there's, there's a few. So um, the next one is Jordan Baker of the Edmonton Stingers. Mm -hmm. um, this is a guy who's been one of the longest, actually the longest tenured CBL player. He was on the opening night roster for the Stingers. He's played all four seasons for the Stingers. Um, and his comparison is Nikola Jokic. Um, mm -hmm. he, he's a 6'7". A um, so not as tall as Jokic, but he's a guy who can do all the same things Jokic can. He's a big time passer. He can score the ball. He can shoot a few threes. Um, but yeah, just really a, a team captain presence on the floor. And despite Xavier Moon running the point, the game was often run through Jordan Baker during the Stingers championship runs. And um, yeah, like I think that Jordan Baker, multi-time Canadian of the year, never really shows off a whole lot of flashy plays mm -hmm. um that's probably the one difference between him and Jokic is that Jokic is a very flashy passer Jordan Baker just gets it done and but in the same way that he's extremely well-rounded for a big like Jokic I mean I'm a Jokic fan so I'm a, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna test you on that one I'm just gonna it's true and I need to see it for myself <laughs> yeah he's he's definitely one you need to watch for sure um Another one, um, Alex Campbell of the Razor Valley Bandits. He's another longtime presence in the CBL. He played for the Rattlers and won a championship with them. Um, and then, yeah, he's been on the Bandits since. His comparison is Kyle Lowry for me. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I, I know that lots of our Canadian fans here will like this one because <laughs> Alex Campbell, Canadian, um, Kyle Lowry, pretty much a... Uh, claimed Canadian even though he's he's on the heat now but Canadians love him um but yeah just the way they play they're very stocky guards strong guards who aren't going to kind of make a lot of highlight reels they're going to win you games and make shots when you need them but they're not going to be the ones who show up in the highlight reel and Alex Campbell is somebody who's consistently been a Canadian player of the year candidate and even a low-end MVP candidate um, but he's not a superstar like he's that's that's the reality with him is that and he doesn't try to be a superstar he plays his role mm. he helps his team win games and he's just his play style in general is very similar to Kyle Lowry's and I can attest to the fact that he does not or he refuses to sit when he's on the bench uh Fraser Valley came to Hamilton uh earlier in the season as well though I think they're only lost right the the yeah free throws Ooh. Uh, uh, but uh yeah this guy is just up and he's at it a lot like Larry. so checks out yeah for sure for sure um what else do i have here so we've talked a little bit about 
Cat Barber. Um, mm-hmm. I guess since he's a, a big name in the CBL, I'll, I'll give him a comparison here. I'm going to give him Jalen Brown. Mm-hmm. Um, they're Oof. both. <laughs> yeah, I know you're not going to like that one. Um, but I mean, you, you can't deny Jalen Brown's yeah. greatness. He's, he's, um, Oh, you sound like one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a, not a Celtics fan, but still I'm a, I'm a Jalen Brown appreciator. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. Um, Cat Barber's a scorer. He's somebody who puts the ball in the net. Um, he, he doesn't have a whole lot of playmaking to his game yet. He's not a huge rebounder. His defense is pretty average, but among the scores in the CBL, he's, definitely one of the top um he when he decides he wants to score it's it's time to score and he's proven that so far in the cbl he's averaging like 23 points a game this year or close to that mm-hmm. and last year he was one of the leading scores in the cbl and unfortunately unlike the celtics it hasn't transferred over to wins yet but um but i mean he's doing his part and he's, he's scoring the ball just like we see from jalen brown and, and the way you're talking about him kind of mirrors the way I thought he played when I when I got to see him it's just business you know what I mean there's not I didn't see a whole lot of extra uh just sort of like okay straight line drives right to the rim use your strength and then making the right plays so even yeah. with the Celtics comparison I'll, I'll give it to you <laughs> yeah he, he just he's, he's a bucket getter that's the yeah. bottom line um should I throw another one your way here yeah let's, let's go one or two more all right so um I think we mentioned Khalil Ahmad a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Niagara River Lions point guard. He is um, kind of around the CBL being propped up right now as the MVP candidate, the top mm-hmm. MVP candidate. Um, but this is a really bouncy guard, and he really mimics Ja Morant in his play style. Mm-hmm. Um, he might not be like, you know, the the same level as bouncy as Ja Morant. But if you watch his highlight tapes, he's he's like, you know, a couple steps into the rim. He can throw it down. Um, he's also one of the league leaders in assists. So a great passer like John Morant. So he sounds like um, an exciting player. He is. He's he's somebody who he's going to score you a lot of points and he's going to do it with a lot of energy. Um, and definitely, you know, if there's some new fans that are looking for somebody to gravitate towards, Khalil Ahmad is one of the players I would recommend. He's very exciting. He's a highlight real player. Um, but he's also, he's not like, you know, we saw from John Morant a little bit like dancing around and stuff. Mm-hmm. This guy, he doesn't mess around. He, he puts them down. He throws down his big dunks and he just runs back on defense. Like he's, he's okay. that guy. He's a mature, mature Morant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you can't dance around in the CBL like that. People won't yeah. let you do that. So. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and then I guess I'll, I'll throw one more here. Um, Xavier Raton Mays, who I've mentioned a few times, mm. um, Scarborough fans, might not know too much about this guy because he's he's hype but he's not like jalen harris hype Mm -hmm. um but this is a guy who spent a few seasons in the nba and played for the memphis grizzlies and and uh has genuine experience in the nba Uh, my comparison for him is devin booker Mm -hmm. um booker much like jalen brown is somebody who gets buckets he scores he's uh you know a shooter and that's what we see from Xavier Raton Mays. It's a lot of three points attempted. And uh, sometimes that doesn't transfer over to buckets, but it quite often does. He's a, like, you know, a score at will player. When he joined the CBL uh, a couple years back, he just, he made it look so easy. He showed up for, I believe, six games or something like that and just like absolutely annihilated everyone. So this is like a, a pure bucket getter who's a very strong shooter from outside, a good mid range shooter and has flashes of um, strong finishing too. Yeah, uh, Xavier is really interesting because I, and some like friend of the show, Caleb Agata, uh, I do a lot of work with him. And the last like two or three years, they've been kind of in lockstep. <laughs> like um, summer league last year, they were both together. Uh, mm. I think X was playing for Atlanta, I want to say. Maybe I can't recall where he was. But he was in summer league last year, uh, and then NBL in Australia uh, for this season. Obviously, he was at Melbourne. Um, so yeah, I, I've gotten pretty familiar with his game. Um, an interesting wrinkle to the CEBL is that they have a U Sports draft, and they encourage U Sports players to play in the league while maintaining their eligibility. So you can have you know Carlton's best player or anyone's best player. Um, go to the CBL, play with these NBA caliber players, 
uh, for the summer and then return to campus to continue to, you know, deal out in uh, U Sports. Are there U Sports performances or U Sports players that have been intriguing to you this season or historically? Yeah, so I think um, this year our U Sports class is solid players, but just because of the depth in the CBL, it's and as it's been in the past, it's hard for U Sports players to gain minutes and um, to get playing time. But there have been a few that come to mind historically that are now getting really strong minutes with their teams. Mm. Um, the first one that really comes to mind is Keevan Vino. Um, sorry if I say that wrong, but he's uh, Hamilton. Hamilton Honey Badgers, yeah, and uh, he he's probably one of the top U Sports products that's come into the CBL. Um, and also, I was kind of looking through and talking to a few people, and we kind of decided that he probably has the best performance from a U Sports player in their rookie year. Um, last year, actually, he scored 21 points, three assists, two rebounds, two steals, and for a U Sports rookie to come in and start a game and score a lot of buckets like that is mm -hmm it's it's not uncommon but it's definitely impressive mm -hmm. um but there's there's so many other players there's thomas kennedy who's come in to we've now he's on the bandits but he spent time with the badgers there's brody clark from the stingers who's now really contributing and leading their team in scoring there's there's so many good ones yeah and i want to shout out aaron rooms he's a freshman at ryerson playing with that star studded scarborough i think he picked up an injury or something along the way uh and obviously with the depth they have and starting power they have not a lot of talent but we talk about the opportunity these kids get um minutes would be a plus but like you get to train and have accessible to you nba level sort of brain power in the coaching staff and also caliber players they're competing against in practice which is just like i feel like this should be available for everybody but we'll, we'll keep this canadian for, for now before they start ripping us off yeah i like it's it's such a good opportunity and it started in the second cbl season was when they introduced the the u sports draft and all the players i've heard nothing but positive about the mm -hmm. what they've brought to the teams and um you know what they've been able to take from the teams it's like, like you said like mm -hmm. they're getting an opportunity to work with nba players and nba coaches and just nba minds and really upping their game and it's showing they go back like players like lloyd pandy and alain louis have gone back to carlton and like taken their game to another level following their cbl stints yeah lloyd pandy declared for the draft i haven't really followed up what he's been doing up to now but yeah he, he's He's on a different level, uh, and maybe he can credit the CBL to that. I'd also like to give a shout out to uh, Okafor on Hamilton. I I've just spent a lot of time with that team so far, but dude, that guy is shot out of a cannon every single game. This guy is flying around on defense, going a million miles an hour. Than that. I mean, he, he needs work, obviously, but fun. He's fun to watch, and he's at Lakehead. Yeah. No, there's there's so many good players that are going in there from the U Sports, um, you know, their U Sports teams and. And just yeah, you, like you say, they're they're flying around. They're putting in a hundred percent. And um, yeah, since it's so hard to come by opportunities to get on the court in a CBL game, especially as the mm -hmm. talent pool increases, they're they're just doing their best to make an impact, even at practices, um, showing yeah. up and you know pushing their teammates. So it's really good to see. And I imagine a lot of these guys are the guy on the U Sports team. So playing time's never an issue, or you know yeah. your weaknesses aren't really addressed, but. When you come to the CEBL and these pros can exploit your weaknesses, you have to work on them now. It's just a different dynamic. And I think that's probably why they come back to campus a lot better. Um, I want you to help us out with our conversational CEBL talk now, right? So when we're chopping it up with someone that actually knows what's going on, we need the we need the quick facts. So let's start with the GOAT. CEBL GOAT. CEBL GOAT, undoubtedly, Xavier Moon. Um, most people will know the name by now. Um, th this is a guy who's come into the CBL for, you know, he was there on day one. He's been a um, multi-time MVP. He's, you know, and unanimously as well. Like there's no debate. Every season this guy comes in, he leads his team to a strong record and twice now championships. He's gone to the NBA and earned playing time with the Clippers. Um, yeah, there's, there's I, I, you won't find many people who will um, disagree with Xavier Moon being the goat of the CBL for sure. And naturally, after we tell everybody that Xavier Moon's the goat, they're going to be like, okay, well, what's your Mount Rushmore? What's your all-time starting five, six? Ricky, we need some help. 
<laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, CBL all time starting five, the, the point guard, obviously I'm giving it to Xavier moon. That's, mm. um, that's kind of like He's the, the go, the go. Yeah. The go. He's got to be on the mount. So, um, shooting guard, I'm giving it to our, or just second guard per se. It's kind of positionless in the CBL. Right. I'm giving it to Linda Wigginton, um, mm -hmm. who played last year for the Hamilton honey badgers and earned playing time with the Milwaukee Bucks this year. Um, and then at small forward, I'm giving it to Jordan Baker from the Edmonton Stingers, who we talked about a little bit before. He's um, you know multi-time Canadian of the Year MVP runner-up um, to Xavier Moon. Um, mm. Led the Stingers to championships. He's just all around one of the top players. Uh, at power forward, I'm giving it to Dang Adele, um, who is you know we've only seen him a few games so far, but just the way he scored with ease and his his just absolutely mind-boggling field goal percentages. And the fact that he's, you know, one of the top scorers in the league. Um, I heard that he had a, some shoulder injury issues in their last game. So I'm hoping mm -hmm. that that's not something long term. But but he's uh, he's definitely up there so far. He's proven that. So he's a first year player? Yes, he's. this is his first year in, in yeah. the CBL. I, I think he was at the Cavaliers before, Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah. Okay, so you're projecting with him. You're like, this guy... Yeah, you know this it. is this this guy's legit, and um, you know we had a lot of hype around him in the CBL community, and and he's lived up to every bit of it. So he's already just through his what like four games, he's he's earned a spot on my Mount Rushmore for sure. Let's go. Um, at the kind of my big man is Brandon Gilbeck of the Fraser Valley Bandits. So this is someone that not everyone will be familiar with, um, but he came in I believe last year. And uh, he was just the most dominant big man we've seen in the CBL. He's a seven footer. He led the league with like 3.7 blocks per game. And he was a top five rebounder in the league. And, and he really made it difficult for teams to score on him. And, and it ended up getting the bandits pretty far into the playoffs. But um, yeah, just somebody that caused a lot of problems for teams. Like it, he just altered the game. Teams couldn't take it down the middle because he would just be there to stuff you. So that's just somebody who's like, uh, he only played one season with the CEBL and um, I hope to see him back again eventually. But um, yeah, just absolutely dominant big man for them. And then I guess for a sixth man, I'm, I'm going to go with Cat Barber um, as kind of the wild card. This like he's yeah. come in multiple times now and put himself in the top five in scoring and just a bucket getter. Perfect. Let's get into some predictions. Um, and we're going to start with a lot of the guys from your uh, top five, six. I've already had NBA time. Which players do you think in the league right now are next in line uh, for their shot at the NBA? And I want to exclude Jalen Harris because he still has team rights with the Raptors. Sure. Yeah. So um, for players that we haven't seen in the NBA yet, mm. they're like it, it's so tough to say for sure because like there are so many players in the CBL who I think deserve an NBA opportunity. But there's so much more that goes into it in the political side, the opportunity side. Um, but as far as reasonable, like who I think could get in there, um, one of the first ones that comes to mind, and we talked a little bit about it yesterday, was AJ Lawson um, mm. of the Guelph Nighthawks. Now he's he's been on the bubble for a few years, and he's he's just been close. Like he, there's always been talk about him being there, and um, you know a good CBL showing this year would put him in a good position to get some attention from NBA or at least G league scouts and, and um, you know, get an opportunity there for sure. He's one of the guys in the CBL that just stands out uh, body wise, like his arms. I'm pretty sure he can just touch his ankles from standing straight up. Like he's got super long arms. He's tall, crazy athletic. He's got his jumper down and um, it's tricky because you, it, your inclination would be look at the stats and see, okay, these top scores and whatever, whatever, I'd probably be the ones that get the, the next shot at the NBA, but really that there's a huge, huge spectrum of things that these guys look for. And it's not necessarily just points and assists. Yeah. Like we we see that in lots of CBL players and luckily, you know, these, these NBA scouts are pros and they, they're looking for other things than just the stats, but the stats definitely help. And, and Lawson's stats are not necessarily bad to start the season. Mm -hmm. um, they don't stand out, but yeah, his body stands out, his potential stands out and we've seen, players in the CBL who don't necessarily stand out on the score sheet um, get opportunities like um, Edmonton's uh, oh man I'm going to butcher this name <laughs> uh, Iyer Uglock 
Um, good man. Yeah, he's. Uh, I, I'm sorry if I misspelled it and he, or missaid it, and he's listening. But um, he got an opportunity to train with the Orlando Magic this year, and and you know a third option for the Stingers. So like not not one of the top guys, but yeah, like there's there's so much that goes into it, and his potential and his his build is just perfect for the NBA for sure. Any other uh, players you think are in that bubble? Yeah, um, one of the ones that um, I'm going to kind of give listeners a sneak pre- preview on that are new to the CBL is uh, Marlon Johnson Jr. Um, this is a guy who has not played CBL yet this season, um, but I- I've got my inside sources telling me he's going to be starting with the team next week. Mm. Um, he won a championship with the Rattlers in year one. In year two, he didn't make it out um, due to COVID. And then year three, he won a championship with the Stingers. And he's re-signed with the Stingers this year. This is the the biggest secret gem in the CBL. I think he's the best kept secret in probably CBL history. He's 6'11". He's got just a massive wingspan. Um, he's, he's so good. Like he can just score from anywhere. He's got a jump shot. He's got big flashy dunks he's one of like the like his nickname among cbl people is the dunk king Mm -hmm. um and like you you guys will definitely be seeing a lot of highlight tapes from him as he kind of uh rejoins the stingers this week after a stint in taiwan but that's a guy who absolutely needs a shot in the nba he's still i think he's like 26 or something like he's still got years left in him and he's he's got like virtually no weaknesses he's defensively strong he's offensively strong he rebounds he blocks he can get steals like he's just he's everywhere on that court so he's one to watch for sure yeah a little little sneak peek for the people that have uh stuck through it to this point Uh, i'm excited hey you sold me yeah no he's he's amazing and um i'm really excited to see what he can do this year and does that wrap up your sort of inner circle of um one last there's there's one more um that i don't believe has had nba time he might have had g league time Mm -hmm. um but it's ahmed hill from the guelph nighthawks and another nighthawk that we've kind of touched on a little bit but um you know he is he's a scorer like cat barber and that's um you know he's he's really paired well alongside barber um but you know he's somebody who's proven that he can consistently score efficiently he's not going to take bad shots for you he's a, a smart player he can do a little bit of everything i definitely think that he could be nba ready if he was given an opportunity and to wrap up what are your predictions for the cebl season where do you think this is heading obviously championship weekend is in ottawa uh do you have any bold predictions any hot takes and what are your realistic oh yeah um and so, yeah, I think that right now my finals matchup is uh, just to get like right into yeah. right into it is um, Hamilton and Edmonton. Mm. Those those two teams have been really, really strong looking so far, and they're both shorthanded. Like Hamilton's got a couple players coming and Edmonton has Marlon Johnson and Matthew Camba, who's another consistent player for the Stingers coming in. So, um, yeah, I see those two teams being the final two teams. Um, but I, I, I know that there's going to be some teams that make noise in the playoffs and could be dark horses to make those finals. Mm-hmm. Um, Saskatchewan Rattlers are one of them that we, we haven't really talked too much about them, but they are, they're coming off of a two and 20 record in their last two seasons. Um, so it's, it's been rough, but yeah. they're finally looking good. Um, and then the Fraser Valley bandits are looking really good this year too. So I don't, I don't see them kind of falling out of contention anytime soon either. And we talked about Scarborough's slow start, but if you're talking about talent being able to pull together, they, they got to be probably on the outside looking in, but still, still available. Yeah, I think that they're a team that um, is talented enough to make the playoffs. And when they do make the playoffs, I mean, with the CBL, it's single game knockout, so it's anyone's mm. uh, it's anyone's championship. So if Scarborough can get into the playoffs. They have the talent and they have the scoring burst players that could take them all the way. Um, they just need to get in there first, and that's going to be the the most important thing is qualifying for the playoffs. And, and what are those qualifications? What do they do? It's uh, how many teams in the, per conf- is it per conference, and is it like top four or something? Or 
Yeah, so I actually, um, I believe this the format needs to be announced this year still with the expansion teams. Oh, that's still happening. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah, but in the past, how it's been is it's been six teams make it in. Mm. Uh, the top two teams get a bye, and then the next four teams duke it out. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's replicated. But as far as I know, I might be mistaken. I might, you know, hop off this right. podcast and see that it's wrong. But, um, but as far as I know, yeah, it's still kind of to be announced, the format. But it, it's it's never been every team makes the playoffs. Uh, n- I believe in the first season when we just had six teams. But yeah, it's not since there's been expansion. So. Excellent, excellent. Guys, this is YEG43 on Instagram. Go shoot him a follow. Give him some support. He does all the dirty work for the CEBL. If you need to get caught up on other things, we didn't even talk about the Elam ending. You're talking about the playoffs. The championship is one. It's literally one every year. Like you have to hit the shot to win it. There, there's uh, mountains and mountains of things that we could talk about. But Ricky, thank you for your time. Guys, go check him out, YEG for three on Instagram. Do you have anything else you want to plug before we, uh, we wrap up here? Uh, no, yeah, just come, come check out my page. Come shoot me some messages. I have lots of interactive content and just... Let's get the CBL popping, guys. Let's let's do it. This is a great league. Guys, we're all going to put our force behind the CBL this season. I said it last year. It, it'll start and go, but this year, there's the momentum. And I think there's a team for everybody. If you're looking for a team that plays like your favorite team, we just talked about it here. Maybe he's one of those. Uh, players, there's lots of exciting ones. And then future and former NBA players as well are all over this league. So thanks again, Ricky. Thanks for having me.